something very special happened because one day my father said, Oh, I think you are ready to receive this gift from me. And ta-da! Inside was this oh, typewriter. Wow. Hi, my name is Shabir and this is The Library Report, a series where we talk to interesting people, explore exciting spaces and unearth compelling stories in and around our libraries and archives. In this episode, we meet Rila Melati, a children's book author and founder of Mini Monsters, a local children's book publisher. We'll find out more about the books and stories that have guided her in her journey from being a child actor to being a children's book author. Let's meet her. Mini Monsters. Hey, Rila, good to see you. How are you? Hello, Shabir. Welcome to Mini Monsters HQ. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Looks like a fun space. Yeah, so this is the loft where I work with my team mm -hmm. and where I spend most of my time. Mm, could you give me a tour? Sure. Let's go, let's go. After Shall you, we? After you, yeah. oh, this is the wall of fame, huh? Yes, this is my wall of fame. These are all the books that I've published and I've written. Nice. So Rila, what was your driving force behind becoming a writer for children's books? Okay, firstly because I had a magical childhood. Uh, I grew up on set, um, you know, appearing in television shows for kids. And those days, uh, being on TV uh, for Malay Children's Television Workshop, it was like, you know, being part of Malay Sesame Street. So I wanted to create content for children. And secondly, also because my father, who was back then a Malay language teacher, he um, wrote a series of uh, children's books to be used in schools uh, back then and I used his books when I was in school. Yeah, so I was reading books that was written by my father. So he played a huge role in inspiring me and I used to follow him to go to publishers with his manuscript. You know, so we will stop from one publisher to another publisher. So you can say that I was involved in uh, bookmaking from a very young age. Something very special happened because one day my father said, Oh, I think you are ready to receive this gift from me. Then he came out of the room and then he opened this big um, box and ta-da! Inside was this oh, typewriter. Wow. Right. Yeah, so he actually gave me his typewriter, That's the so one cool. that I grew up looking at and I used to sleep hearing the clicking of this typewriter. I will keep and I will not part with it uh, forever. It's an artifact. Yeah, and, and, I, <laughs> and I think it's, it's a constant reminder for you as well of your connection yeah. you know, to your dad and through him to the work that you are doing. Yes. Yeah, that's brilliant. And talking about uh, childhood, uh, what kind of books did you read as a child? As you know, um, because my father's a teacher, right? So my father will bring home rejected library copies and he will set up a small library at home for me. Nice. So I will read supplementary readers uh, and those times in the 70s, English books would actually be printed in London. So yeah, so you know, you, you will have those uh, vintage copies of Ladybird books, the fairy tale ones, yeah, like Snow White, mm. Cinderella. And I also, my favourite one was also uh, the Peter and Jane series. Remember Peter and Jane? No, I don't remember uh, Peter and Jane. <laughs> oh, man. So like every kid growing up in the 70s learning to read would have to read Peter and Jane. Right, okay. Yeah, so those were the books Yeah, I grew up with. Nice. I'd like to see the books you keep around here. Oh, sure. Oh, this looks like a fun space. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this one is... Um, a mixed selection, uh, mm -hmm. but generally it's for our children to come and pick any books that they want to read before the start of class. Right. Uh, this is also where I keep some of the reference books for my teachers, um, for them to look for resources. And uh, if you can see all these toys, uh, that's because they play a part in making the books come to life. Like for right. example, this one here. Mm -hmm. Chili, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is actually a costume for a child. Mm. So the child can become a chili and <laughs> we have the book. <laughs> right. Yeah, Lada oh, Yang Pajas. Yeah, so oh. you know, teaching them that uh, chili is hot. Oh, that's yeah. so cool that like you got a prop to go with the book that's and that right. captures their imagination, huh? That's right. That's cool, yes. very cool. So it's a, it's a fun shelf really, this one. Yeah, and this is also the place where I keep some of the books that actually inspire me. Uh, one of them is this one, Maya Angelou. 
life doesn't frighten me. So people I, I always think that she only writes adult books, right? Mm. But she has also write for kids. Mm. Yeah, it's a lovely book. You should read it. I should, yeah. yeah. I never knew she wrote uh, books for kids. So this is where we have our collection of books. Every book that I've written mm. is here, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, I, I can see that you pay a lot of attention to the cover and you know how attractive it looks. I'm sure it attracts the children, right, when yes. they come in. What inspired you to write your own books? Okay, at the time when I uh, wanted to write the books, I realised that there was a dearth in uh, Malay books for children. And most of the books that were available were imported from Malaysia. There was a significant gap where we did not have uh, children's books that were locally written by uh, Singapore authors. Mm. And I thought it was very important to start something because if we don't tell our own stories, who will? And uh, contextually, we can't be depending on imported books alone. The children will not be able to fully understand and appreciate because, uh, you know, different nuances, uh, different settings, right? I've written about 25, 27 books now, but when I first started, I actually started with only two titles. So, these were the two books that I started with. Gajah Unto Adil, An Elephant for Adil, and Tikus Pute Adil. Mm. Yeah, uh, Adil's White Mouse. And uh, it grew because we took these two books to schools as a speech and drama program. And it grew to become uh, five titles in all, followed by all these other books that you see. Wow. Yeah. So this one is special, Si Pencuri Ketawa. It won the Anugrah Pesuratan in 2016. Brilliant. It was when I uh, went for a residency, a writer's residency at Gardens by the Bay. Mm. So the story is about the characters uh, living in Gardens by the Bay and they can only be seen by kids, <laughs> by children. Yeah. And this one actually went on to become uh, a children's television show which actually debuted on Surya, Mediacorp Surya in 2020. What does a typical day look like for you? Well, because I'm an author, I spend my time reading. I read a lot and then I also write a lot. So I'll be on my desk writing new stories. Uh, but as you know, I also run Mini Monsters. So from time to time, I will pop by the office and hold creative meetings. And I'm also an emerging translator because uh, recently I've taken into translating um, works from Malay to English. Uh, but one of the earliest works that I've actually translated is this one, Bangau dan Ketam, uh, originally from English, which is um, titled the Crane and the Crab, written by our late president, Mr. S. R. Nathan, published in 2013. So I was commissioned by the uh, Singapore Book Council to do the Malay version. Mm -hmm. And uh, this book was so special uh, to me because I got to meet the president right. and I got to talk to him. Yeah, and uh, I will always remember that moment. And Shabir, I also sit in the Malay Advisory Committee uh, with the National Library Board. Uh, what I do is me and the rest of the committee members in the board will sit and discuss and see through titles that are suitable uh, to be put in the library for children to read. We also do things where we encourage parents to become active readers together with their children. So these are just some of the things that um, I work with uh, the National Library right. Board. You must yeah. have a very packed schedule, I can see. Yes, I and, do. And I like the fact that, you know, um, they're all interrelated to what you're passionate about. So yeah, that, that's great, that's great. You're, you're such a huge inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. So what kind of books play a crucial role in your daily life? A variety of books, yeah. I try to read as much as I can and usually I will have at least about five books that I will read concurrently. When I was younger and uh, when I was a student, my habit was actually to read one book religiously and being very loyal to the book, I will make sure that I will finish reading that book before I go on to read other books. But that habit has since changed. <laughs> yeah, so as an adult, uh, I try to read at least four or five books simultaneously and usually one will be like fiction and then one will be a children's picture book and then one will be a Malay book. Uh, one will be a non-fiction and another one will probably be a self-help book. So usually that's the pattern. Mm. Yeah. So I mean like currently I'm reading this one which is Archer the Museum. This is very interesting. It's a Malay YA novel. Uh, so for young adults, 16 to maybe 18. Mm -hmm. And 
I love this book because uh, it's been a long time since Singapore has any YA uh, literature for in Malay. Yeah. Right. So, you know, something very special. It just came out last year and the author, Farihan Bahron, um, I think successfully captures um, the essence of what young people like uh, in this book. It's, it's, it's a sci-fi mystery, but the setting is very much Singapore. Mm. It happens in Singapore in, 20, in the year 2043. So this book is special because I chose it to be the main book that I translated for my Emerging Translators program, which took place uh, uh, with the National Centre for Writing. Yeah, so yeah, so hopefully uh, I get to translate the entire book and somebody would like to publish it in English. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we look forward to that. So this one. And there's another interesting book because since um, you know I'm into translation now, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to read more translated works. So mm -hmm. this one I picked up in a bookstore in London and the title just sold me. It says Delegat Dream Department Store. The dream you ordered is sold out. So what <laughs> happens if you can go to a department store and buy dreams? Wow, okay. Yeah, so I'm hooked to this one. It's actually a Korean book mm -hmm. uh, which is translated into English. Yeah. And then uh, self-help book, uh, inspirational book. I also picked this one. It says, on our best behaviour, the price women pay to be good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anything to do with women? Okay, must read. So I'm looking forward to, to reading this one. I thought it's, it's really very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I find that yeah. extremely interesting that you have really um, books of various topics from various genres. And I think uh, you do that because you want to stay balanced. Yes. Because <laughs> I do I, that too. Yeah, yeah, because I get bored uh, just having to push myself to read one particular book. Mm. You know, and, and I think as you, as you mature, the mind gets more curious mm. to find out more things and you are able to cope with doing different things simultaneously. So it's no longer about uh, loyally trying to finish one yep. book, uh, discovering about one topic, one subject before you move on. So mm. I guess uh, it breaks the pattern mm -hmm. and it makes my reading life more exciting. As we wrap up, um, what advice would you give aspiring children's uh, book authors who are tuning into this episode? Well, they need to read as many children's books as possible from all different authors uh, they have to genuinely love children's books because children's books are special comes with very beautiful illustration most of the times the stories are even written for adults Mm -hmm. uh, the lessons learned are for adults, yeah? Get themselves uh, familiarised with the different writing styles, children's writing styles. And Shaber, it's very important that you become a child mm -hmm. when you want to write for children because otherwise, the rasa and the jiwa will not be there. Mm, two very crucial ingredients. That's right. So before I go, I want to do a shelfie with oh. you, if that's okay. Yeah? Sure. Let's go. Smile. Nice, thank Yay. you, thank you very much Rila for enlightening me with your bookshelf and your entire journey itself and it's very inspiring, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for watching this episode of The Library Report. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and leave a comment about other projects at NLB that you'd like to know more about. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get notified the next time we upload a video.